Where's the... <laughs> yeah, we're here. So pro. <laughs> wow, well, at least it's regular speed this time. I still can't hear it. <laughs> Thank God. Tail thump. Let me know when it's over. I know Adam likes to let it play way. It's too over. Okay. It's not as funny if you can't hear it. <laughs> if it doesn't torture Dan, then what's the fucking point? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> son of a bitch. I mean, what's life without a little Dan torture? <laughs> <laughs> I can feel you on that. Look, let's start things off. Let's just jump right into it and get into a very serious topic. Something that I think needs to be discussed here. Okay. Um, My dick. Your dick is not serious at all. Your dick is quite humorous. Um, not that I've ever experienced it, but I'm just. <laughs> I was just going to let that comment play itself. That, break, out. that breaks our no nuts rule, Doug. That, that breaks, you know. Yeah, then I've, one of us has to die. So I've told. I actually have discussed that um, I'm, I'm dating somebody, and we've you know we, you talk about dating and shit, right? And your your past red flags, whatever. And I talked about Doug being my heterosexual life partner. And of course, I, I also have discussed this in front of perfect strangers because I'm Dan and that's what I do. Um, and I was trying to explain that um, relationships are weird because you introduce sex into it. And the minute you introduce sex into a relationship, it changes the dynamic. And yeah. Doug and I have been friends for a long time. And I call him my heterosexual life partner. And I actually, when I was telling the story when we were in Moab and I told this story, I actually, when I went to say that, you know, Doug and I have been friends for 10 years, I, I, I legitimately said, Doug and I have been together for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, and everyone thought that was just funny. And I just started laughing. I was like, see, I fucking told you. you know, Doug and I have hung out for 10 years. And uh, it's because we've never had sex and because I don't care what he does with his money. I don't care what he does with his money or his penis. And he doesn't care what I do with my money and my penis. And therefore we have been good friends for 10 years. Right. And we don't, I don't fight about like if Adam and Doug go hang out and, and get lunch or something, I'm not like, Oh, I don't see when hung out with Adam today. And then I don't like simultaneously hit up Adam and be like, Oh, so you're fucking around with Doug now. That's what you do. You know? Oh, 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 so you and Doug are just BFFs now, huh? <laughs> but I'm telling you, the minute I fucking, the minute that I, I start railing at him or Doug, I'm going to get jealous. It's going to happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah what so what he said was the minute he started railing me, he started getting jealous. Yeah, That's what I heard. Just immediately started getting jealous after Adam and I started having sex. I remember sex. that. So, I remember that. <laughs> but, but to go back, see, we all have fucking ADD. This, it's on one of those podcasts. Goes a anywhere. super serious topic. A super serious topic. Okay, listen. This needs to be discussed. All right. I mean, we need to put a fucking end to this because it's wrong and it, it's, it's causing global warming and cancer. And that is that there is no such thing as a fucking boneless wing. All right. They don't exist. It's a fucking chicken nugget. They're good chicken nuggets. I like them, but there is no such thing as a boneless chicken wing. Done. Yeah, you're period. not going to get an argument out of me because I've never seen a chicken fly with a fucking boneless wing. <laughs> that would be that would be a uh, definitely a biological feat to be able to fly <laughs> Just, with a boneless wing. I mean, can you imagine uh, a chicken like climbs up to the top of the roof and it jumps off and it tries to fly on its boneless wing and it sort of flaps spastically as it plummets towards the ground. These little blobs just sort of like yeah. shaking. <laughs> But chickens can't fly anyway, right? Uh, they can short short bursts. So yeah, there was a whole movie about it called Chicken Run, where they were trying to get out because they couldn't fly. <laughs> they couldn't fly. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, apparently it was a documentary, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the claymation uh, documentary of uh, Chicken, Chicken Run. Run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, I, I was out last night and I asked the woman if uh, uh, it's, oh, do you guys still doing? It was Twin Peaks, and I asked. If they were still on chicken wings, and she's like, oh, just the boneless ones. And I sort of twitched a little bit, and I was like... Oh, yeah, I said wings. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Bone, fat, you know, not just diced up uh, white meat. But they were good night the fuck out of them because I'd had a couple beers and just needed carbohydrates. Or, yeah, carbohydrates and 
I didn't mean to say that. Calories. That's what I was looking for. I might still be a little drunk. I'm not sure. Um, had a good day yesterday. Um, I wish you could see my shocked face right now. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was weird. Um, I went and picked up my dog's ashes. Uh, we didn't do a we didn't do a podcast a couple weeks ago because Adam sucks. Um, so that's we, not why. No, we, that's not what happened. It's that's totally no, because Adam sucks. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's no, 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 no. Two no, out of no, three no. podcasters agree. <laughs> Adam are, sucks. These are statistics, man. You can't argue with numbers. They're, I can't. There are a lot of people that believe a lot of very dumb things. So very, very dumb. Just numbers. because two people agree on it doesn't mean that it's true. Okay, sixty-six hey, percent of the people on this podcast <laughs> agree <laughs> that you suck. So, with majority rule, you know. Yeah. What, what were you up playing all night that night? What did you? Uh, I was playing Gary's mod all night. <laughs> he woke up. Well, it was like one o'clock. I had shit to do that day too, which is typically kind of rare on podcast days. And uh, he's like, "Oh fuck! I just I just woke up." <laughs> I Dug woke it. up and my phone had so many notifications. <laughs> I was like, "Huh? Who's been trying to? Uh, oh, oh, uh, hey, hey, guys." Uh, <laughs> Hey, I just woke up. We were like, no. <laughs> and we knew we were shit talking. It's, you know, obviously this uh, this podcast is very much for our own hubris and um, um, amusement. It has nothing. It's not making us any money. That's for sure. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not like we got a grand riding on this thing every other week. And it's like, <laughs> I want to get paid, Adam. No, right. it's it, we're just doing this thing for shits and giggles more than anything to amuse ourselves exactly make somebody else laugh hey that that works for me so That's, long story short it wasn't my fault is so, what i'm getting it, out of this yeah long story short adam sucks um he's yeah, playing yeah. video games all night uh, um, it wasn't my fault though so um, so we we i i had um i had previously like that week i th- or the week prior to that i had uh put my dog down uh 12 years old and he had had a uh uh, degenerative disc disease that we dealt with back in 2017. I knew it was going to come back and haunt me at some point, And it finally did. And it sucks. You know, I don't care who you are. I'm 40, fuck pushing 46 years old. And I screamed and cried like a baby. I mean, hyperventilated and just fucking lost my shit for three days. Um, it sucks. But you got to, when you're in that situation, you got to do what's right for the animal um, and not yourself, you know, and it, it's complete garbage. The, uh, what, what killed me is I actually told my neighbor upstairs cause they've got a little girl and Parker loved this kid. And, uh, she, you know, of course she's a child and he's a dog cause she loves him. And I hit my neighbor up and I said, Hey, I just wanted to let you know, I had to put Parker down, you know? And, uh, he said that she cried and I was like, Oh God, it feels so shitty. But yesterday I was leaving and uh didn't even hadn't even thought about him it's been a couple of weeks and uh my neighbor jack uh he's 91 years old and this motherfucker gets around better than i do most days like i I hope to to be that nimble (laughs) at at 91 if i make it that long and uh he had asked he said yeah i haven't seen parker in a while i'm like oh fuck you know it kind of dawned on me that i hadn't said anything so uh I'm, i'm telling him and he starts talking and sympathies, you know, et cetera. And then he says, uh, he starts kind of like recounting how he's like, I, 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 you know, looked forward to seeing him and his little head would pop up and he, he'd rested on the, uh, the, uh, ledge there, which I used to call chinning. If he ever wanted something, he'd come over and he's, he'd put his chin on your, your leg and stare at you. And <laughs> you knew that meant he needed something. You had to go through the different options. But he starts talking. He's like, yeah, and I, and I look forward. And, I, and all of a sudden he stops talking. He takes his hand and he puts it up to his mouth and he, he goes to say something and his voice cracks. And I'm like, oh, don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> don't do it. And he looks at me and goes, you, you, you've got to get another dog. You have to. And I felt so bad because I, I realized that they're in their 90s, right? And I can't, his wife's like 86 or something like that. So I completely understand why they don't have dogs or cats, right? You, yeah. It's ridiculous to, to do at that age. And it dawned on me that he had really been kind of um, enjoying uh, Parker because he was a good dog and a good neighbor, meaning that we've all lived next to that 
that dog that won't shut the fuck up, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and ships everywhere and just acts like an asshole. And it was definitely not Parker. He loved everybody. Um, but yeah, it was really, it was a neat perspective for me because like, I didn't think about how my dog integrated into uh, the neighbors I have. And I have fantastic fucking neighbors for an apartment complex, um, just phenomenal. And it, it, I think has made apartment life a little more, uh, tolerable because i hate fucking apartments but having good neighbors so um but yeah so that that sucked balls um uh i also went to moab uh fucking out of nowhere so i'm i'm just a little danny globetrotter these days (laughs) danny the explorer (laughs) yeah well, I mean, for all you non-dog people out there, you know, because I know there's legions of you fuckers listening, um, but for, it's hard not to love something that is so happy to see you that it's <laughs> ass wiggles. It's like I've known a lot of people in my lifetime, you know, and it and it's like, you know, I'm 47, my mom's still around. I love my mom to death, but... You know, when I see her, my butt doesn't start wiggling and neither does hers, <laughs> you know, it, so it's, it's just kind of a different thing with a dog. And, you know, as a dog owner, part of the reason why you have a dog is, um, it, it it's almost like, um, having, having, you know, it, 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 while it's not the same thing, it's kind of like having a kid because, at the same time that you're taking care of the dog, you sort of get to see the world through the dog's eyes. Definitely. So it's like if, you know, I've got Shadow, if Adam or Dan come over, Shadow is so ridiculously happy to see them. And it's like, <laughs> oh, God, they're here. Oh, God, 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 God. Oh, love on me, love on me, love on me, love on me, love on me. <laughs> a lot like Doug, actually, when we see him. <laughs> Shadow acts a lot like Doug. Yeah, well, you know there is some truth in that. Parker acted like a lot like me. It's the like you the, the kid analogy is I think very true. Um, that there you you watch them come up from a puppy and your interactions, the way you train them or raise them, turns them into the adult dog that they are. And I, I think a lot of dogs act like their owners, and I think there's a a, a very um, pertinent correlation there i I definitely think there's a a thing there because shadow does act like you (laughs) oh yeah or you act like shadow i don't know well you know we've we've got a little bit of other stuff going on so meanwhile dan is going over all these significant life adventures (laughs) and i had something funny happen the other day and it was it it, you know it it was funny to me and i'm gonna share it and uh it's embarrassing (coughs) um Let's see. I had a guest that was staying with me for mm, several days. And as one often does, I did not engage in self-pleasure while they were here. And uh, I would hope not, especially considering. Yeah. And as soon as uh, I dropped them off at the airport (laughs) and uh, in the airport parking lot, (laughs) as as soon as I dropped them off at the airport, as I was driving back, I looked down at my dick and I apologized for what I was about to do to it when I got home. Hell yeah. I said, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to get beat to death when we get home. boy. Hell yeah. I'm going to beat you like you owe me fucking money. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's your dick. Beat it when you want. <laughs> <laughs> So like Dan's going to Moab and doing all this other stuff and I'm apologizing to my dick. And I'm playing a prostitute on Gary's mom. (laughs) (laughs) This is a cross section of your America people. Right. (laughs) For for those of you not familiar with video games, he's saying Gary's mod, not Gary's mom. (laughs) Gary's mom. That would be an even better game. Yeah, Uh, Gary's mom. Didn't, didn't that dude work on some AAA titles? Uh, the guy Gary, the guy that did, because he did Rust too, didn't he? 
Yeah, I used to work for Valve. Okay. So he, I, I think he he worked on like Half-Life and Half-Life 2 and Portal and stuff, I think. Okay, gotcha. And then Valve stopped making games, so he went and did his own thing. Gotcha. And was like, okay. right, Gary's mod, fucking Rust, let's go, make a shitload of money on these. <laughs> <laughs> and Valve went on to create Steam, which is probably, arguably, the premier online video game uh such Sore. a gimmicky fucking yeah yeah valve went on to create steam yeah it sounds like well, such a joke and, and then, then they created their own engine that they called the steam engine they did yeah, yeah. i would have too i mean come on you're a bunch of fucking <laughs> nerds smoking <laughs> weed drinking mountain dew going steam engine <laughs> <laughs> right i mean i ain't hating on them steam is the fucking devil um, for those of you who are not video game people, you know, when I was growing up, Nintendo and shit like that, if you wanted a game, you had to go to a store, you had to look through them and you had to pick physical media. Well, just like everything else in the world, things have gone virtual and uh, online. And so Valve, as Adam stated, was a, a video game uh, studio. They, they made video games designed this system where you can buy the video games online and then just download them to your PC. It's the fucking devil because it's, you're sitting there in your shorts, um, drinking your diet Mountain Dew and you either get an email that says, Hey, a game you once thought about is on sale by $3. So, and you, you should totally get it. You should totally get it. And then you go in and you click that and you're like, fuck 1495. Fuck. Yeah. Click. You know, and I've, I've got a collection of games that I don't know that I've ever installed or opened. But I, I remember them, uh, God. I remember once a year, Steam would do the summer sale. Yep. So you get you'd be like, oh, yeah, the summer sales here. Let me let me snag all these things that I've been needing. <laughs> and then apparently that wasn't enough. So then they started doing the winter sale <laughs> and then the spring sale <laughs> and the autumn. Sa- so it's almost like well, they, they never they, stop having a sale. Well, they know their target audience. And weirdly enough, so does Dan as I sit here in shorts drinking my Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> I, I'm in the same. I was like, he's talking about me. <laughs> hey, that's me. That's how you got to target. You got to target that audience, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's the fucking devil. Um, I play That's awesome. I don't play a lot of games. The games that I play all tend to be uh, multiplayer. And it's, uh, I've explained to people, you know, being 45 years old and I'm in, you know, kind of the Jeep community and the Harley Davidson community. And a lot of these people like to be out and about and they don't play video games, the, the majority of them. And uh, they're like, ah, oh, you play video games. That seems weird, whatever. And I was like, yeah, but I've used those video games over the years. Um, like when I lived in Florida, um, I think it was actually when I started getting back into it, Doug was, uh, I don't know if you were out here yet. No, I don't remember. I think you were still in, yeah, you were still in Birmingham and Juan was in either Wisconsin or maybe out here at that point. And that was one of the ways that we hung out. You know, we played like don't starve and um, a couple other games. And it was really more about, um, it was sort of like a phone call, a conference call, with a video game in the background to just keep us kind of occupied, you know, and we'd be giggling about the dumb shit that we did. we were usually drinking, getting shit faced. And (laughs) that's kind of how I got back into video games. And it's what I do in the wintertime, especially when I'm, I'm, it's fucking cold and there's 963 feet of snow out here because it's Colorado. Um, We play video games and we giggle and act stupid, you know? Um, Yep. It was funny and don't starve because Dan is Dan, and he's sort of, uh, for those of you familiar with the meme, he's sort of Leroy Jenkins wherever he goes. (laughs) I really am. (laughs) I think I've learned to accept that. (laughs) And uh, there was, uh, in Don't Starve, it's a resource-intensive game where basically the game is trying to kill you the entire time (laughs) with 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 various stuff and uh, all I've got to say is Dan is the most dangerous thing in the world with a torch because <laughs> like you you'll you know you get to the point where you like move a lot of the resources that you're collecting you can eventually pick them up and then carry them back towards your base and you wind up uh, so you can get wood you basically wind up building a forest around your own base and Dan has set bases on fire 
<laughs> at least three or four different times <laughs> where he's sitting there and will like need something like charcoal, which you have to burn wood in the game to get charcoal. So, so Dan's like, well, I'll just go out here to all these trees. And you're like, <laughs> no, Dan, no, Dan. And then he goes out there and he sets it on fire it burns down all the trees and your base, and you're sitting there <laughs> literally looking at little piles of ash all over the place going, <laughs> thanks, Dan! My, my favorite, though, was um, we were playing Seven Days to Die, which is a zombie survival game, and it's got some really neat mechanics. And by neat, I mean what the fuck. And uh, it, it was that you had built that base... And I was trying to build on top of it and forgot that it's got one of its physics rules is weight. And if you put too much weight on a um, series of blocks, the blocks will just disconnect themselves and crash. (laughs) I'm just building away. And all of a sudden, Doug's off somewhere. So he doesn't see what I'm seeing. But our our headsets, our our communication is still live. And all he hears is me going, oh, God. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, 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 shit. (laughs) <laughs> oh, hey, Doug. The fuck did you do, Dan? Oh, funny story, buddy. <laughs> funny story. Yeah, it's hilarious. This is just a pile of fucking rubble. <laughs> so, yeah. Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Adam and I we were playing uh, Phasma, Phasmophobia, which is an oh, interesting, gosh. it's an interesting game. It's an interesting concept. It gets a little grindy over time, but... Um, one of the things that you you do, it uses your mic um, as part of the game and you're a ghost hunter, basically, and you're in these different scenarios like cabins and prisons and things like that. And one of the things you can do to piss the ghost off and put it in what they call hunt mode to where it can actually harm you is say its name. So Dan goes for the fucking speed run. <laughs> I walk into the room and like the ghost's name was... Charles Smith. It's just a randomly generated name. And I just walk into the room. Everyone's quiet. And they're they're looking for clues. And I go, Charles, 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 Charles. <laughs> Fucking lights. And then start all blinking. the lights start flickering. We start people start dying. And he's like, <laughs> I'm in a closet. I'm in a closet. I'm scared. So yeah, I love games. I love video games. I do. I mean, I grew up on them like a lot of guys my age. That was kind of Atari. I think Atari started it wrong. I mean, I know Atari started it, but to me, the golden age was around the Nintendo. Cause I feel that's like when I think at the time Atari was still sort of a, a, a niche thing. Like it not, but, but then like the not days as niche as you think it's like uh, <clears throat> in, I was going to school in Gardendale, Alabama at the time and practically everything that had something, you know, every kid, that was my age, that was a boy, not all the girls, but like all the boys. We all had Atari 2600s. Uh, Hell, I even remember, like, it was funny because the, you know, the Atari 2600, it's this, um, it's this plastic game console, but it was still in the era that they thought that they had to put wood tone on everything to make oh, it yeah. look classy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you had this plastic thing with like a wood look in front. You oh, slid yeah. your cartridges into it. Everyone knows what Natari is, though. Everyone yeah. knows what Natari is. I don't. Uh, I mean, I know what it is, but I've never seen one. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Okay. You have All the right. internet. That, that, that's the problem with the internet. Like you can't, you can't bullshit us like you used to be able to. Uh, you can't describe anything to anybody anymore because you're just like, ah, get on your phone, you pull up a picture, and you're like that, and I'm like, oh yeah, that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen none of those. Yeah, you know. Um, another another serious thing, something that we need to talk about. Um, the uh, kind of affects the world is. Guatemalans, right? We need to talk about <laughs> Guatemalans. Um, North Korean Mexicans. Guatemalan Mexicans. I've, I have shown that YouTube video to so many fucking people. Um, yeah, good old Guatemalans. You got to love them, you know? You got to love them in all their glory. Uh, I, I will say this about Guatemalans. Uh, it is believed that they invented what we kind of know now as the chocolate bar Um, because cocoa or cacao was so, was very important to the Mayans. 
Um, and they think that they're the ones that sort of like mixed it with sugar and created the bars um, for, for trade and stuff like that. So I will give them that. Um, they, they invented one of my favorite foods. So, um, and they talk really, really fast. So that's, uh, that is my experience with Guatemalans. And I was told once, rule number one when dealing with Puerto Ricans is never trust a Puerto Rican. So, and that was, and that was told to me by one of my dearest friends who is in fact Puerto Rican. Um, so the question is, do you trust what he says oh, or do shit. you not trust what he says? And then, yeah, exactly. God damn it, Adam. Exactly. See, I'm, I'm going to have to hit one up after this and be like, Hey man, Hey, Hey, I can trust you. Can I? So they'll say <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he'll say. I remember I met one. Uh, he he works with us and has for many years. And he came into the department that we were in at the time. And um, I we were in a meeting and uh, for our department, and I was mouthing off about something. I was very outspoken. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was very outspoken back in those days. I've I've actually calmed way down, but uh, something was dumb, and I was expressing why it was dumb. And uh, Juan told me years later. He says, uh, "He goes, dude. He says, I'll never forget that day." So I was sitting in that meeting, and I'm watching everybody. He said, "And then you start talking, and I think." this motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> he's like this motherfucker right here is dropping logic on these people and uh it was it was fun we 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 became friends pretty quick uh after that and uh love him dearly but yeah we uh we poke at each other he's like I say, he's puerto rican he's got kind of a thick accent and uh we, we have a lot of fun with that. So, um, and, and I have a friend who is also Guatemalan and listens to the podcast and I thought it would be fun to fucking harass him too. It's too late, Dan. There are, they already shut it off. They shut it down. Guatemala is now uh, filing injunctions against us because <laughs> it's of Dan. It's too late. It's too late. Because of Dan's fucking mouth. Um, so I was going to tell a story, Doug, you know, last, uh, last couple of podcasts we've talked about to write, telling funny stories. And I was reminded of a story uh, that I, a couple different people have made a comment um, and I'd say, Hey, remind me to tell you the story about, you know, this. So I thought I'd put it out here because it was, uh, it was in my head this morning. Um, and it's regarding the band Queensryche. Oh, and God. I think a lot of people are familiar with, with Queensryche, right? Silent Lucidity and Jet City Woman, Jeff Tate, you know, whatever. So uh, it was 2000. Jesus Christ. 2000, I have no idea. What you, the fuck? What Queensryche is? Yeah. Really? I mean, clearly they're German, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. German. No, they're not German. God damn it. Then why does it have the word Reich in it? Well. They, they suck. I can mm. tell you that. It's like. Oh, they don't when I was suck. In, yeah. When I was in high school, there were a lot of my friends. It's like, oh, Queensryche. And I'm like, uh, no. I don't think there is. I'm not as big a fan as a lot of people. I do love the song. Jeff oh, City right. Different. Still has the two dot shit, though. Yeah, still has the two dot shit. Um, and for the 80s, they were a little different because they weren't as, you know, let's do coke and fuck hookers uh, in every song um, or all the innuendo and everything. So 2011, um, my ex-wife Alicia and I, uh, we we had we we got together in 04, got married in 09, and there was no our wedding was very low key. We had no uh, um, honeymoon and all that shit. We had both been working a lot. We 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 were both very hard workers, still are, but were then too. And uh, in 2011, she found this thing called ship rot, right? And it's it's still going on today. It's gotten even bigger. They use uh, MSC cruise lines, um, and. What it was is that they booked a bunch of metal bands. Uh, they put them on a, a ship with a bunch of metal fans. Uh, I had never been on a cruise, and this seemed like like I don't think I can handle a normal cruise because I don't relax well. I don't calm down and relax well. I get fucking bored and fidgety, is what happens. How do I get off this fucking boat? Right, dude. I'd be I'd be walking around looking for shit to do on the boat. And I love the ocean. It's beautiful. I love being out on the water. It's it is phenomenal to be that far out. Right, and I, even the boat rocking was was cool as shit so we do ship rock right and um we, we both were pretty pent up we hadn't we hadn't done anything in a long time uh like that or you know ever really 
So we fly down to Fort Lauderdale from Birmingham and there was a, a pre-party there in Fort Lauderdale. I think it's Fort Lauderdale at the, uh, uh, the, the ship ports. Um, so we go down and, and there's bands playing and everything. And Alicia and I are, we're, we're power drinking, dude. We, we were just fucking cutting loose. We're in Florida. Uh, I think it was like November maybe. So it's, you know, it was cold and gray in, in Birmingham and it's all beautiful in fucking Florida in Florida. And uh, we're power drinking and Alicia's all dolled up, right? We're looking good. And she's shit faced and she goes to walk out this little boardwalk and she's wearing heels because she's Southern and, you know, the Southern chicks will get it. And uh, so she's walking and her heel gets caught in between two boards and she just fucking face plants, dude. I, I mean, it was epic. It looked like something out of a movie. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm running over. I'm only a few feet from her, 10, 20 feet, something like that. And I'm running over to grab her. And this other dude comes, to, you know, running up too. And we get her up. And I literally, she came out of her shoe and I had to pry. I had to use force to pry the fucking shoe out of the boardwalk. <laughs> like, so she's okay. She's fine. Mostly, I think, because she was shit-faced drunk and, like, didn't tense up because she didn't have time. Her brain was like, hey, what's going on? Um so her and this dude get to talking or we're all talking and come to find out that not only are they in the same industry, but they know each other's companies and know other, like they know um, people together. Right. And we'll just call it pharma research because my ex has fucking signed her weight in NDAs. And for as much shit as I talk on here, I don't want to get anybody in any trouble. So he's like, the guy was pretty cool. And he's like, Oh, Hey man, why don't you come hang out with, uh, why don't you come hang out with us? And we were like, yeah, sure. Okay. So we walk over. So the man that they met was Martin Shkreli. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, uh, so that's how I got into, uh, you know, insulin research. He said, I have this awesome Wu-Tang record. It's gold. <laughs> I have this I'm idea. the only one that has it. Do either of you like sugar? Um, <laughs> drink more. So we, we, we walk over and as we get closer, I start to recognize some people. And it turns out to be a couple of the guys from Queensryche. And what I'm assuming is crew and shit like that. And one of the guys is there. I think he's a guitar player now. Queens are like, like a lot of eighties bands. They've gone through a lot of shuffles. And I think there's like one original member in the band clinging on to those royalty checks. And, uh, but one of the guitar players was a kid. Fuck. He was probably about 25 then named uh, Parker Lundgren. And uh, they were, we're chilling. And uh, Parker Lundgren is actually married to Jeff Tate, the original singer of Queensryche, he's he's married to Miranda Tate, who is Jeff Tate's daughter. And they've got a baby there with them, newborn, right? And we're sitting there. And although Alicia and I never had kids, we never wanted them, uh, though over, you know, 15 years, there were a couple of times we thought we might be having them, if you know what I mean. And uh, she does really, she was great with kids and people, it's, just, it's really weird. She had this vibe about her where people would just hand her their babies like, oh, here you have to hold my baby. And which typically is not a big idea or a big deal unless you have been power drinking <laughs> for the last like eight hours. And oh, no. <laughs> so I see the fear in Alicia's face as they're there. This woman is just handing um, Alicia Jeff Tate's grandchild now you gotta understand <laughs> alicia's a huge 80s metal fan like she she just it's her fucking thing she's just it's she's absorbed somewhat obsessed with it honestly and so the dna that's being handed to her is freaking her the fuck out right now right so she's got the baby and everything's fine she's sitting down and she's got the baby and she turns to me now alicia and i had a lot of inside jokes it's actually one of the one of the, my favorite things about our relationship is that we had a lot of very we, we were both very quiet um people when we're not drunk believe it or not very re very very reserved the way we were raised but we had a lot of really smart ass inside jokes and so she's got this baby and she turns to me grins and says they've got a baby in a bar now for those of you who are not familiar that is a line from the movie sweet home alabama I was with Reese Witherspoon and it, she said it to be funny because that was our sense of humor. I'm cracking up. She's cracking up. Right. <clears throat> the crew is not cracking up as much. Right. I, I, <laughs> I think they thought we were truly being um, 
you know, judgmental of the fact that they had a big, and it wasn't really a bar. It was a hotel and we were out on the patio, like the swimming pools and the ocean and all that. It really wasn't a bar. Not that I give a fuck if you have your baby in a bar anyway. That's what Southerners are, you know, because a lot of Southerners, uh, they come up and, uh, especially at the time we would have all grown up. It's like, it's, it's more or less expected that at least while your child is young, you turn around and go to church. So there's lots of judginess going on in the South. So I imagine that along with her accent sort of, uh, yeah, her, I, yeah. her accent, she, she probably poured it on for the joke, but the one thing about Alicia is that she, she actually worked. She'll tell you, she worked hard to get rid of her accent because of the stigma you know, and, and being in college and, and going through and do, getting into what she got into with um, biochemistry and everything, uh, she she worked hard. It did come out when she was on the phone with her family. Like, I've got videos somewhere I'll have to find, and I'm just cracking up because, you know, sweet home, yeah, sweet home Alabama. But she probably did put it, you know, let it loose for the joke or from drinking, it might have been coming out. So there's this, there was this chick there and I, I very lovingly refer to her as Xeno warrior princess because this chick was six feet tall, six, two. She had shoulders like a fucking linebacker. Um, obviously was a bodybuilder or worked out cause she was just fucking ripped and she had kind of been being an asshole the whole time. But I, I don't think I really realized it until after the whole baby in a bar incident. Right. And uh, so we hand the baby back and we're just talking and everything. And this chick's like, you know, you, you'd say something and they do that <laughs> shit like that. And I was like, wow, okay, this chick's kind of an asshole, but whatever. So at one point my ex goes to the bathroom, which is, they've got like a little building out there uh, next to the patio and the little tiki bar and everything. And she's in there for kind of, you know, kind of a minute. I'm like, oh, I better go check on her. So I walk over and, uh, Zena and a couple of her fucking minions are hanging out. And this woman walks out and I said, excuse me. And I said, um, my wife's had a lot to drink and she went in there. I said, did you see a woman? And I described my wife and she's like, Oh yeah, she's, she's washing her hands. We were just talking. I was like, okay, cool. And, uh, I said, all right, thanks. And fucking Zena comes over and just starts chewing my ass. And she's like, rrr, rrr, and you're fucking stupid wife and then fucking bitch. Da, 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 da. We'll kick her ass and all this stuff. There's three of them there. And uh, I just stood there real quiet. And this chick's like fucking towering over me, man. She's she's a giant. I got real quiet. And I looked at her and I said, oh, okay, cool. I was like, um, if any of you put your fucking hands on my wife, I'll knock your fucking teeth out, bitch. And you heard the the, the needle scrape the, the fucking record player. Like, <laughs> they like, pulled everybody. out a record player, started it just so started, they could yeah, stop guy it. Yeah, walked over and took it. Anyway, <laughs> There's like 10 people and all they heard was me look at this chick and be like, I'll knock your fucking teeth out, bitch. And, um, which was a little awkward. Uh, but I would have, had they touched my wife, I would have knocked the fuck out all of them. I I, I don't fuck with that. So, um, they just stood there. They didn't say a fucking word. And then they just turned and walked off. And I was like, "Uh Oh, so Alicia comes out of the bathroom. She's like, woo. (laughs) <laughs> she starts walking back over. I'm like, yeah, that, 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 that. And I grabbed her by the shoulder, and I, I was like, yeah, let's let's uh, let's not let's not go hang out with them anymore. And we went went back up to the hotel room, and uh, I, I I went back to, to do some more drinking while simultaneously she turned the hotel bathroom into a Roman vomitorium. Uh, thank yeah, God perfect. for tile. Is that a real, is that a thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Roman vomitorium. Uh, she puked fucking everywhere. I got back up to the room. She wasn't in bed and I'm, I knock on the door and, uh, she doesn't answer. She doesn't answer. So I pop the fucking door open and she's sitting there. I think she was maybe in, maybe just a bra or just panties. And there's fucking puke everywhere on the walls and fucking, (laughs) and she's got, she's, her clothes are in the bathtub and they're, they're wrung out and she's got the towels and she looks over at me and she's fucking cleaning it all up. I was going to help until the smell hit. And I was like, Oh God, I was like, you're on your own, sweetheart. Love you, but you're on your own. And I got to give the woman credit. She cleaned that fucking, that bathroom was cleaner when she was done, but there was like three giant towels worth of fucking vomit 
in the bathtub. We were like, we, we left them an awesome fucking tip on the counter of the bathroom. I think we literally left like a hundred dollars because we felt so fucking bad about leaving it like that. But there was only when you don't have cleaners and washing machines, you know what I mean? I'm in a hotel room. Yeah. Bathroom. So we, we did see the dude that, sh- that, that ran over and helped us a few times on the boat and he was cool as shit. And like, we, we talked to hung out. So I don't think Xena went back and talked any shit on us, but I genuinely thought that like this entire fucking grizzled, like Lemmy Kilminster looking road crew was going to come over and just beat my fucking ass, uh, you know, for threatening this chick. And he's like, well, something tells me she could probably take me, but I wasn't going down without a fight. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my story on how my ex-wife um, inadvertently offended uh, members of Queensryche. <laughs> In, in 2011. So anytime somebody mentions Queensryche, I just sort of giggle because I, I replay that story in my head. Um, but that was, it was a cool trip. And we saw a lot of cool bands um, in this moment. Seven Dust. I actually hung out with um, uh, Corey, and, Corey Lowry and John, can't remember his last name. Excuse me, from uh, uh, Seven Belushi. Dust. John Belushi, yes. From uh, little known fact that he plays guitar in, in Seven Dust. Not many people know that. Um, not many people know that at all. So I was very drunk on tequila. Uh, John was very fucking cool when we sat and talked about gear and shit. Uh, Corey, Corey had his wife and um, – or Clint Lowry. Corey's his brother. Clint Lowry uh, had his wife and his kids there and was dealing with them at the time. So it was just like typical family drama. You know, kids are like, Aah! and the wife's like, oh, my God. And it was just funny for me because these are rock stars, right? These are dudes that I've – I changed the I changed my stage presence because of seeing Seven Dust. I saw Seven Dust live, and I was like, "Oh fuck, that's that's how you you perform on stage, right? Fucking there." So to see that, and then to see him like, you know, trying to find a diaper and a peanut butter sandwich for his <laughs> kids, and the wife getting mad and and everything, it was really, it was it was pretty fucking cool. He's doing the airplane with the spoon, <laughs> right? And he's like, "I'm like, this guy's a fucking rock god. What the hell?" And then Lejean Witherspoon, their singer. Um, I, we ran it. He, he was, he's a very bouncy individual and we kept running him, him on the, on the ship, you know, and he'd make jokes. He's like, you again? I'm like, get some fucking pasta and move on. I'm hung over and hungry. Um, <laughs> it was cool. It was a really neat experience and I'd like to, I'd like to do it again at some point. But, um, so I recommend it to anybody who's, and they have them for like eighties, eighties bands. Uh, Alicia does, uh, monsters of rock i think it's called and it's just 80s bands um and then of course every band has gotten it's kind of become saturated like kiss did a a, just a a kiss cruise and i think megadeth did one and like every band on the fucking planet it's like yeah yeah we're on boat we're on a boat you should come see us yeah boat and it's like okay it's, it's getting a little ridiculous. You could see yeah. us, but like on a boat. But on a boat. <laughs> We're know, on a boat, motherfucker. If I could design my ideal, <clears throat> my idea of hell, uh, a kiss cruise sounds like <laughs> one of the top options. I'm just saying. I would agree with you on that. I am not a kiss fan. I think they're terribly overrated. Uh, a couple decent songs, but you know. I've got like four albums out, I think, and I feel like we've got a couple decent songs. So I think I think any musician can pop out a couple of good ones. And when you've got the money to produce it behind it, um, look at some of the fucking pop nowadays. You know, it's fucking garbage. The and- the the only thing that that band did right, the only thing, was their marketing. Oh, you know, time. it 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 was like they were marketing geniuses uh and you know it's it it, it's sort of like you know it the modern day equivalent now would be like if the most popular instagram person out there or one of the top ones came around and put out their own album regardless of whether it sucked or not there would be people that would just be all kinds of fans because they were all about that lifestyle, all about the symbology, all about everything else. And Kiss was sort of that way. And they did marketing really well. Yeah, they did. Gene Simmons was a fucking genius when it came to that. Still is. Yeah. I mean, but if you gave me a choice of where I had to either listen to monkeys fuck for an hour 
or I had to hear a Kiss album, we would be listening to monkey fucking. I'm That's all sure, I'm saying. I'm not sure there's a difference <laughs> between those two things. You just basically said the same thing um, twice. So I'm not sure. And to the Instagram thing, do you remember the Cash Me Outside girl? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's she's popular. Well, the funny part about it was... Uh, well, she did an album. Know, she, so. Yeah, she's done... A, uh, I think she's done one or two. Yeah. And she had her own OnlyFans Only fans. page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which apparently like broke fucking money records. So people were just waiting for her to pop. And I'm just like... <sighs> I don't, I don't like to talk <laughs> shit on people. Everybody's got their struggles, man. But like, there's a reason the word white trash fucking exists. I, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. But then again, if people wanted to pay a million dollars to look at my dick, I'd be like, I could use a new house. Brother, I'd be throwing out eight by tens fucking signed. Are you kidding me? And all of its fucking mediocre glory. You better believe it. So I ain't hating on her as far as that goes. I just... It's not, there's nothing there as far as, um, she's not that hot in, in my opinion. Um, I don't think she's like, cause like when I go see, I went yesterday, I went and saw a bikini contest. Right. And some of these women were like, dear God, you know, they look like they were sculpted out of a fucking, like a comic book, you know, artist drew them. And, and I get it because it's a, that is a men and women who have got like great bodies, what we consider great bodies or like um, an epitome of the form. I can appreciate that because of, of that very reason. It's the epitome of the human form. And it's like, wow, that's, that's really neat, right? To see. So I understand that when a woman walks out and she's just this epitome, I understand why people are like, Ooh, ah, you know, whatever. Um, but when an average looking chick with no, redeemable qualities seems to be lacking intelligence and more importantly, morals. Like, I don't care if you're dumb or hot or whatever. If you're a good person, I can find that attractive. I can find that sexy even like, cause I don't, the whole model thing isn't, I, I don't, I'm not specifically into that. Right. I, I like, I like chunky girls. <laughs> so I'm a, you know, I like a woman to, you know, have uh, curves like a woman, just saying. Um, but it's the moral thing. She's just, her whole platform was not giving a fuck about anybody else. And I just, I don't know. It's just not attractive to me. I think more than anything else, it was the fact that she is 18 and fairly well endowed. I think that's what drove it because, um, if memory serves correctly, it was within a few days or maybe the day of that she turning. turned 18. Yep. Oh yeah. It was so, the same day. So, um, you know, you've got several horny people out there. That's like, you know, because 18 year old, whatever, that's, that's a genre. That's a thing. Yeah. You know, as soon as you can fucking get them in, yeah. you know, Hey, we've got this 18 year old, blah, blah, blah. And as long as it's got, 18 in the title of something else, you know, there are a bunch of horn dogs that are out there clicking on it. Pedophile. The word you're looking for is pedophile. So I know that uh, March 26th is when she turned 18. And yeah, I think you're right. I think she dropped, dropped her only fans like that day. Um, and you can say, well, it's not, uh, it's not pedophile. Cause she's 18. Uh, okay. You're, you're, you're sitting there waiting on the fucking button to come green, you know, uh, and, and she goes from 17 to 18. Yeah, you're a fucking pedophile. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll tell you this right now. It's like uh, if there was a 18 uh, year old uh, female underwear model out there that wanted to do me, I would still be like, no, because you're going to talk afterwards. And I'm going to have to, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to hear your 18 year old dumbness. And I just can't deal with that. To me, that's the thing. <laughs> I think we've hit an age, Doug, that, that 18, like even for Adam at his age, 18 is kind of still within the realm, right. Of, of reasonable. And no, no, <laughs> no. Well, yeah, for, never mind. Sorry. I forgot your uh, proclivities. Um, 
18 is to, is still a child to me, you know, the, oh, yeah. the woman that I'm, I'm dating right now is a 17 year old daughter. And like, that's gross to me. Like that's, well, it's truly it's, fucking gross to even think about that. That's nasty. Well, I mean, if you have a conversation with them and I'm going to borrow a little bit from Joe Rogan here, it sounds like they're still practicing talking. <laughs> it sounds like Joe Rogan is still practicing talking, but yeah. yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> I get where you're coming from. Um, yeah, that's and that's a good analogy, right? Is they they say shit, and you're just like, what? They've still got that childlike uh, to them, you know, where they kind of yeah, they say weird shit and they say shit for attention and stuff like that. Not that adults don't do that too, but um, it, yeah, I, it's just that's weird to be sitting around waiting for a a chick's fucking eighteenth birthday to see them nude, like. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Whatever, dude. Um, and that's been going on for a long time, man. It's it's like uh, remember, y- y- you know, uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Oh God, who have never been attractive to me at any age, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, and there were sick fuck. You, you know, yep. it was like it like made the news. You mm-hmm. know, it's like. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen are 18 now. Uh-huh. And the whole purpose of that title uh-huh. was just so some perv out there was going. <laughs> uh-huh. There were like websites dedicated to that, to when they turned 18 and shit. And it's like, it, you start to realize just how deeply ingrained pedophilia um, is in human culture. Um, but if you go back, you know, to the fucking 1700s or any, any time before that, um, it was not uncommon for girls to be pregnant and, you know, 15, 14, 15 years old, having kids and families, but your, your life expectancy was also like what, 30, something like that. Yeah. So 15 was midlife. <laughs> they were having their midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. At, around puberty. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm sure there's some biological evolutionary reason for it, right. At 15, 16 years of age, the a girl is, um, you know, they're fertile and they're healthy and they're probably more capable of having children safely, etc. But the thing is, is we're not for as much as I talk about how humans are really just fucking animals. We're just monkeys, that, hairless monkeys. Um, I also believe that there are things that we do or are, are capable of doing that set us apart from being just animals. Right. And morals and moral code and ethics and things like that are honestly, while a construct, um, definitely are what set us apart from being animals. So 30 year old guy, when you're out there wanting to fuck a 15 year old, no, it's not biological. It's you lack the ability, you lack self-control and you're kind of a pedophile piece of shit in my opinion (laughs) for what that and $5 will get you a fancy cup of coffee. But um, it, it just goes to show how rampant it really is. You know, shit like that. Um, it's creepy, actually. This this podcast has gone to a creepy place. Creepy, creepy, creepy place. <laughs> <laughs> That's not terribly unusual. No, not really. <laughs> not, not particularly. So shut up, Adam. Um, okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. He spoke, and we don't we don't allow that. I talk way too much. I know. I've noticed somebody. Um, it's like, Jesus Christ, Dan, does anyone else get a, a chance to talk on the podcast? Like, dude, it's open. Anyone can talk, uh, you know? Yeah, you just have to wait for Dan to shut the fuck up. <laughs> fuck you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it hurts it, because it's true. <laughs> it hurts because it's true, Dan. Um, and admittedly, the last, uh, the, the last episode I even said was oddly Dan-centric, you know, because we were talking about me. The whole time, it's kind of uncomfortable to go back and listen to that when I was like, "Ugh, I don't want to." Ugh. So, I actually, don't listen to the podcasts. Um, yeah, it, it, look at me, look at me. Oh God, they're looking, they're looking at, me. at me. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 Dan's basic conundrum on a daily basis. I don't, so Dan is a cat. I'm a cat. Yeah, T- touch me. Touch. Don't fucking touch me. The fuck's wrong with you? It, it, love on me. Love on me. That's too much love. <laughs> too much love. <laughs> You just can't give me too much love. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't particularly like attention. Um, 
I mean, I like attention as much as anyone else, right? You don't like to be completely shunned. <laughs> Shun. Um, Charlie. Oh, well, well, it's Shun interesting. Shun the non-believer, Shun Charlie. Shun the non-believer, Charlie. <laughs> well, it's... Charlie. Oh, crap, they took my kidney. <laughs> We amuse ourselves. That's the important thing. We amuse ourselves. That's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm all out of stuff to talk about. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. Let's shut this thing down. <laughs> we'll shut see you later, down. fuckers.